Th thank you, President, and I'm very pleased to rise to speak to Mr Limbrick's motion. Uh, and it's a very simple one, and I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed that um, neither the government nor the opposition would support a, a very simple call to just evaluate what we're doing. This isn't saying to stop sniffer dogs. It isn't saying to roll out more. It's just saying, let's evaluate it. And um, having been, and, and, and that is recommendation 50 of the, um, the Law Reform Road and Community Safety Committee's recommendations. And that had a consensus report. We did have a, we had a minority report from, from, from one member but we had a large number of supporters of that recommendation, including Mr Jepp in this, in this place, and the chair, Mr Howard, uh, in the other place, uh, Ms Suleiman from the government, Mr Dixon uh, from, uh, from the Liberal Party, all supported the idea that we would evaluate, because when we were investigating this, and we, we, we heard a lot of um, information, and we certainly we certainly heard from Dr. Peter Mallins, um, who could not, you know, who Mr. Limbrick has has um, has spoken about, that they noticed that they that the drug detection dogs did not seem to cause more harm than good. But we don't know. We honestly don't know. Now we've seen the New South Wales Ombudsman has done a report, and and that report was fairly emphatic. We know that. These dogs don't work. They don't reduce the number of people using substances. They don't, they don't even actually find people who have drugs on them. In fact, remarkably, they're wrong 70% of the time. Um, so even if, if the police were just to flip a coin with each patron and test them on that, they may have better success. Uh, but what is probably more concerning, and this is what the Ombudsman brought out and this is what the New South Wales coroner brought out, was their ability to do harm. Their ability to force some, not force someone, but to alarm a young person who may be carrying some substances to actually take more than is good for them. And we certainly, the coroner used examples of this, the ombudsman in New South Wales used examples of this, uh, where people had actually um, increased their drug risk because of the sight of a sniffer dog. We've certainly seen this. And we have heard about this in Victoria, but it's only been anecdotal. We have no real evidence about it here in Victoria. So this is a very simple motion. This is saying, let's evaluate this, let's look at for the evidence, let's assess this. Um, sniffer dogs are not cheap. You know, the, the cost of having a dog out at, say, the Rainbow Serpent Festival in Ballarat, where it might be 42 degrees in the, in the shade, uh, to have one of those dogs out there costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And there has been no evaluation as to say that money was well spent. Now, Ms Taylor spoke about the fact that they may act as a deterrent, that they may actually um, provide, you know, e enable people to get into diversion programs if they, if they are picked up by them. And that, that strip searching was very rare in Victoria. Well, I'm very pleased about that. Very pleased about that. I, I can tell you the people at Picnic Electronic last Sunday did not feel that. There were some very aggressive uh, strip searches that took place um, at that festival last Sunday. Uh, but it seems to me that the speaking notes, and they were, they were interesting speaking notes from, from the government, largely came from the Victorian police. And I, I sense that that, that, that that close relationship between the police and the government at the moment on these issues is, is not in the best interests of our community. 
If you thought sniffer dogs were a good thing, if you were the Victorian police and you were saying, the, these are a very good tool, and, you know, I, I too uh, uh, visited the, the training, the, um, uh, the training programs and, th and, and went out and saw the dogs and saw their handlers in action uh, last term. And, you know, they, they, they are remarkable. But if we thought they were good, why would you not be open to an evaluation? Why wouldn't you say, well, let's evaluate this. Let's look at what good they do. And maybe we need to roll more out because they are so good at, as Ms Taylor mentioned, maybe moving people um, away from harmful drug use into diversion and following on that way. So the only logical, the only logical solution would be to support this motion, to say that if they work, then let's see how we can get them to work better. Sadly, I have to say that all of the evidence that we have seen and the evidence that the committee received uh, on drug detection dogs um, was that they had very limited effectiveness. Very, very limited. Um, <laughs> I'll take up Ms Sheen's interjection here, <laughs> because this could be something the evaluation could look at. This could be something the evaluation could look at. Could greyhounds be the answer? Could greyhounds be the answer? I know they are the answer to many things. So this, this would be the reason why we would support such an evaluation, to see if we are actually, the only problem is, is we are using the wrong breed of dogs. I mean, beagles were our go-to. Then we moved to, um, to Labradors. And <laughs> again, all of this is leading me to the obvious conclusion that we should implement recommendation 50, which is to commit commission an independent evaluation. Now, we saw on Chapel Street, we saw the sniffer dogs. And I can tell you, like, I, as someone who, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 50s now. You know, my, my partner was at the first Aquarius Festival in 1969. And I can tell you, there was no sniffer dogs there. <laughs> he's a Peter Pan, I'll tell you, Mr. Jeff, he's a Peter Pan. But uh, he was there. There was no sniffer dogs. There was also very few overdoses. And there was people looking after each other. And even, you know, the famous cry out at Woodstock, watch out for the brown acid. It's not good, man. Um, these were the early warning systems that, we, that were used in those days. But the advent of, uh, the, of sniffer dogs coming into our festivals, of sniffer dogs walking down our streets. You know, how intimidating is that to see dogs walking down your streets, and not just lovely, lovely brown Labradors, uh, but we are using Alsatian dogs, we're using, uh, we're using German, German Shepherds, all beautiful dogs, but all on a Friday night, on a busy night in Chapel Street can be extremely, extremely intimidating. Now, if there is a young person who may be carrying some substances, because young people do explore Drugs, I'm afraid to say. Um, it's, it's, I'm not that afraid, Mr Jennings. Minister, I'm not that afraid. It is an absolute fact that young people do experiment and they do take risks. And by having sniffer dogs out there, sometimes we are very afraid that they actually take greater risks because of those dogs there. We saw three people die in Chapel Street. Now, the... The answer to that, three people die and 50 people, I think it was 50, 50 people were taken to hospital in Chapel Street because of some very dangerous substances that were available. Now, the first answer to that would have been an early warning scheme. The first answer to that should have been the police testing those substances and then getting that information out there as broadly as possible to say there is a substance out there and it is very dangerous and in fact people have died from it. But they didn't. The, re the response to that was to put more police out there and, and dogs. 
to put dogs out there on the street, to say to our young people, um, this is how we feel that we can control you. This is how we feel that we're going to make you safe. And we, it did not make them safe. And as we've seen, and as Mr Limbrick raised in his, in his um, contribution to this, as he puts in his, his, um, in, his, um, in his motion, we know the evidence from the New South Wales Ombudsman, from the New South Wales Coroner, from, from uh, Dr, Dr Peter Mallins in Victoria, we know that they don't keep us safer. They don't keep us safer. In fact, they do the opposite. Now, now Ms Taylor uh, says that we use them very differently in Victoria, and I would be very interested to hear more about that, which is why I think we should have an evaluation. Let's have a look. Let's look at how many dogs we are using. Let's look at their effectiveness. Let's look at how many false positives they found. Let's look if we've seen that that has increased arrests for trafficking. Has it increased diversions? These are all of the questions we do not know the answers to. And when we were doing the drug law reform report, it was on this and it was on many other areas where the data just wasn't there. We just didn't have the evaluation. And I, so I welcome uh, Mr Limbrick's uh, motion. I would have thought that both sides of this chamber would also welcome the idea of receiving more information, more evaluation about what works to keep our largely young people safe so that they can go on, um, generally probably get mortgages so they can't afford to um, have big nights out. But they grow out of it and we know this. We know that young people take risks when they're young and then they generally grow out of it. What we've got to try and do is keep them alive to do that. And I commend Mr Limbrick. I uh, would hope that we would see a very simple piece of data, data collection. And I, I would have thought that the police would have supported this. I understand the police have not supported the idea of evaluating their programs. And I actually find that quite alarming because maybe they would all be better off with a greyhound than a Labrador. We don't know. So I commend Mr Limbrick for this motion and I do hope that, um, that this House supports the very simple recommendation of having an evaluation to, 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 to determine the effectiveness in deterring the use and trafficking of illicit substances and any unintended consequences of risk of harms resulting from this strategy. Thank